In today's video, we modify this ultra minnow mold to make custom inline spinners. We're gonna modify, I think we're actually gonna do two because it's that simple. Let's do the quarter ounce one together and this one eighth ounce. I'm hoping the final results will be a sweet little inline weighted spinner for bass at a quarter ounce, and we could use the 1 8 ounce to make little miniature deals for crappie. Let me get some wire set up and we will jump right in. So before we lay our wire in, I wanted to show you guys what I buy. This is from Barlow's, 100 count, 40 straight wire. And then likewise, same thing, right? 100 count, 029 wire. So we're gonna use the, um, the thicker of the two right here in the quarter ounce, and then we'll use the smaller crappie size right here in the eighth ounce. Something else we're gonna need is some um, painter's tape, right? Just regular old blue painter's tape. Got a little piece uh, torn off here, so I'm gonna just take a little bit of that and tape this down carefully I move the other one we can kind of fine adjust it here before we commit there we go this nose looks pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and tape it down sweet now there's a lot of ways you can do this I clamp it shut I put it on the floor with a on a block of wood and then I whack it with a hammer and that's what you're going to see here in a minute but if you wanted to you could uh, put this in a table vise just seal it up and crank down on it. 100 different ways to skin a cat here you guys do what uh, you feel most comfortable with I'm going to do it like I always do and we'll get to pounding here in one sec. All right here we are on the floor as you can see I've closed the mold and those are right where I want them to be so all I need to do now, you can see that offset. I'm going to hang that off of the edge. Some guys like to put a piece of wood on top. You can certainly do that um, if you want to. The biggest thing is getting that elevated off the floor. Otherwise, as you hit it, it's going to want to um, move on you, and that could cause problems with your placement. So give it a good squeeze. Take my mallet and give it some wax. That should do it. We should have indentions from both of those wires now. Next step will be um, taking the wires out and filing it until both sides will want to file this top, the, the one side and the other, so that that um, wire will fit down inside of there nicely and we can get this to seal up. All right, let's open this guy up and see how we did. So that looks pretty decent. You can see how it's Made a little indention there, but proof's in the pudding. Let's take the tape off. Very nice, just what I was hoping to see. You can see real easily on both sides where that wire was coming through. So now we just need to take a file. Where's my file? There it is. Got a little triangle file. You can see I've used it quite a bit for other mold modifications. But we'll just take a file and go right in those grooves just like that. We don't need to do anything back here, right? Because we're using the hook slot. So file that out just big enough for a 0.4 on that one and just big enough for the smaller wire on that one. We need to do the same on that side as well. And we will be ready to pour some lead soon. There we go. Got them all finished up. Everything's sitting in nice and pretty. Seal it up here. Everything stayed. Everything is nice and secure. You can see it's sealed up, so we're not going to get uh, too much flashing, if any. And they stay in, right? It's just the right size, nice and snug. So, let's talk about a nuance with regards to the wire before we pour the lead. All right, there's two things we need to be thinking about before we close this up, and that's this. We need to figure out uh, how much we want hanging off the back because we certainly 
don't want it to be 50-50. Um, we don't need all this area in the back and we want to maximize our space up at the top for beads and, this, and the blade and all that good stuff. But we do want to have some off the back because we need to um, we need to make a loop and spin it around a, a little like a, a barrel twist and things of that nature. So uh, I found about, I don't know, an inch, inch and a half is probably plenty. Secondly, and just as importantly, what I learned when I did this the first time is I poured it just like this, straight wire all the way through the bait. And when uh, I did that and I put it in the vise to um, attach the bucktail to it and get it all set, that lead would just spin on this wire. So to uh, take that into consideration and to counteract this, one we're, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to put a bend in this wire, a little kink up and down and back straight. That way the lead can't spin around the wire since it's no longer a straight shaft going through it. So here's my wire bending pliers. I took those, used the smallest setting you can see they have all different sizes here, but use the smallest setting to make a couple of bends. And I think we're all set. So that's all it takes. Just bend it up a little bit, bend it back down, get it straight. That little notch, I'm telling you, will save you all kinds of headache when it comes to tying on the bucktail and all the good stuff here. So anyway, let's warm up the lead. We'll also bend the wire for this guy and we'll get to pouring. All right, lead is hot, form is ready. Let's get that bad boy sealed up. I'm only going to do one at a time because the wire will be in the way if we try to shoot both at the same time. So first is first, this is the quarter ounce. All right, let's see how she turned out. Yeah. Sweet. Clip this off since we didn't have a hook in it. Do a little um, filing down and of course cut off the sprue. We will be ready to go. I got the wire bent for the eighth ounce. Let's do that one next. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, turned out real nice. So let me get these two um, all cut up and the sprues off, filed down, and we'll take the next step. I got them all trimmed up. They turned out pretty nice. Huh? There's the quarter ounce. If you can. See that one all right. And then there's the eighth. On the quarter ounce, we did have one side, it was the other side that we couldn't see when we opened it, that had just a little bit of that bottom collar that didn't fill out. But it's not anything that's going to affect our ability to tie on it, and it's certainly not gonna affect the fishability. So we'll paint it as is, and I think it's gonna be just fine. Speaking of paint, how are we going to handle this? Because that's a little too deep for a um, fluid bed or in a cup of any kind. We could go ahead and bend this around and make our little loop back here that we'll attach the split ring to and our hook to, but um, that means we're gonna get paint inside of that hook and, or that loop rather and I'd really like for that, if at all possible, we'll get some paint on it anyway, but to stay as clean as possible. So we're actually going to hand paint all of these with um, little shakers, or I've got black at the end here for one of the patterns. We'll just use a, a paintbrush and dip it down in and then tap, tap, tap the black on it. So let me spin the camera around and show you my setup um, and then we're going to get these on the heat and we'll paint each one of them. So you can kind of see what I was talking about, right? Got our white pearl, got a piece of paper down to catch all the leftovers so we can put the remainder right back into our container. Uh, smoke there, chartreuse, and took that off of the fluid bed. That's my black. So two different patterns. Our quarter ounce is going to be a base coat of white pearl over the whole thing and then a smoke top. And then the eighth ounce for the crappies uh, will be a chartreuse base all the way around with a black top. Normally we would want to cure this uh, powder paint so it's nice and durable, but I would cure it sitting up like that so that if there was any drip 
it would drip down and not create a bubble. I can't, I don't want to cure it sideways, which would be really easy in the oven. Um, because if I have any extra, it's going to create a sag right there and it's going to ruin the inline. So instead, I have a new toy and we are going to finish these in a pretty cool way. New to the channel, definitely not a new technique uh, altogether, but one that I'm pretty excited to share with you. I've got the eyes on, let me show you. Oops. There's the one, looking pretty good. Hopefully you can, there we go. Make sure it's not too bad out of focus. So just some simple silver eyes on that guy. And I love chartreuse and black with some red eyes. How are we gonna paint these things? Well, I got a little something to show you. How about this guy right here? That's right. We are going to use a rotisserie and some two-part epoxy with a little bit of extra flair in it to finish these guys off. Let's look and see what we can find in the old soft plastic bin. So into my flake here, you need to have super small flake. So I have found that stuff like this, it's just a little too big, even uh, size one five. I mean, unless you're looking for more of a polka dotty kind of um, really in your face kind of look, then even the one five is a little too much. But zero, zero 008 is just right, or what they call extra fine, right? So I got some smaller bits. We are going to go with this blue extra fine for one. And then let's do silver extra fine for the other. We got our goodies. Let's now get the two part ready. All right, nothing fancy here. Got a couple of to-go cups, right? Once you get through your ketchup in and stuff. Found those at the dollar store. Got some, like I, I mentioned, five minute epoxy. Paint brushes off of Amazon, super cheap. It was like seven bucks for 50 of them. So I'm not gonna need much. These are small heads. And I'm gonna put just a dab in both. Make sure I get a little bit of each actually you know what let's do one at a time since it is five minute that would be wise see that all right and let's do our quarter ounce first so we're going to go with the blue on this one a little bit of this goes an awful long way especially with so little um two part so we're gonna just dash it in there there we go there you can see get our head and paintbrush and go to town i bet i won't use even a third of this there you go you can see how much flake there was I mean, I hardly put any in there, but I think ugh, I think that's going to look really nice once it's all said and done. Very cool. So I'm going to get this on the rotisserie, get it going. I'm going to do the other one as well. Um, this will be on the rotisserie while we do it because I don't want to wait. Now on this one, some silver flake. Just the tiniest little bit. Actually, going to use the back of this. There we go. That'll be plenty. You guys even see that? A little sparkle. There it is. Ooh, that's pretty. Very cool. So, let me get this on and I'll show you how it all looks together. Looks good. There you go. Rotisserie is going. 
Those are gonna spin for a while. Um, like I said, five minute epoxy, but I have really found that the longer I can let them spin, the better it is. So those are gonna spin a while. If you can believe it, it's actually really late here right now. So I'm gonna pick you guys up tomorrow. Welcome to the next day. So I let those heads turn on the rotisserie for a good couple of hours last night and then they sat overnight as well. So there's no tackiness to them whatsoever. I went ahead and pulled both of them out and created the barrel uh, twist at the end. The way that I did that was to find a space just a little behind the back of the head and I used my wire bending pliers to create a 90 degree bend one direction. Then I spin the pliers and bend it all the way over the other direction so that I get a, uh, a loop with a 90 degree angle. After that, I put the loop in the vice grips and then I use the pliers to pinch where those two wires meet. Once that's ready, I just spin the vice grips, which creates that barrel twist right around the wire. At the end, you can cut off the excess but leave that loop in the vice grips so that you can then bend down that extra little piece. At the end, you've got a nice clean barrel twist. So that's where we find ourselves now, but I screwed up on the larger of the two heads. Uh, that quarter ounce one, I wasn't mindful of the direction of the head when I started twisting the wire and it ended up being perpendicular to the head instead of in line with the head. Not a big deal from a hook perspective because we're just going to add a split ring and a treble hook to the back. So that's not a problem, but it does make it a little interesting to put it in the vise because now normally you would want to uh, put stuff in the vise so that the head is up and the belly is down. Well, if I put it in here, well, here, let me show you. You can see the head, the belly is over here. The head is over here because of my um, barrel swivel or barrel twist, I mean, is in the wrong direction. So not a big deal. I'll just turn it and we will put our materials on like that. For the smaller of the two, we're good to go. So the tie on these guys is gonna be pretty simple. So the, uh, the quarter ounce is what we're gonna do first. And I've got two colors of craft fur, extra select craft fur. If you're gonna work with craft fur, I highly, highly suggest getting the extra select stuff. So we're going to play off of the flake. If you recall, we put that nice blue flake to finish up this in that two-part epoxy. Uh, so we're gonna use white for the belly and this nice kingfisher blue for the top. We're also gonna use just some nice pearl flash um, just to kind of give it a little bit of glimmer. All right, we're using 210 denier flat wax nylon in white today. By far the most awkward part of uh, dealing with these inlines, at least from the vise, is this big long wire sticking out of the front. But I just take extra long loops and wouldn't be a problem. First color, that uh, Kingfisher blue for the top. Not going to need much. Small collar, just a little bit on top. around and catch it. Nice um, light wraps just so I can spread it out. Just want it to cover the top so that looks good. Okay, now onto the white. Interesting working from the side here. The vise doesn't get in the way. I almost like it. There we go. That actually looks pretty good. I thought we were going to maybe need a little bit more white, but that looks pretty darn good. I really want it wispy. Lots of action, less is more kind of thing. All right, I am gonna go somewhat heavier on the flash though. We're going to do, gonna have plenty of it. So I'm gonna get two strands and double those over. It's pretty short. So I think I'll double that over and cut it. 
and then we'll maybe stagger it just a little bit if it's not already taper it I mean about half of that is just about the length of our craft fur so I will go to the side now which is usually the top and this is gonna be interesting tell you what let's do it around the um, thread that'll make it a little easier it's all going on one side so we're not gonna we're not gonna like double it over and, and wrap it around so this will work do want to spread it out on this side though that looks good you can see that spread out over the top and now let's do that again for the other side Now, whip finishing this guy is going to be interesting because I got to get all the way around this wire. Um, <clears throat> it is possible, but I have to kind of use another finger. So normally I'm going around, I don't know if you can see that on the, this camera here, but normally I'm going around about there. I actually need to hold this here so that I can, I need more string or more thread too so that I can bring it way out here without without it coming off the head just like that use my thumb to keep it on those um, threads there we go a little awkward but we got it done Alrighty, and as usual, we are going to use some Loon water-based head cement to lock those threads in. Uh, I've got a selection of beads here. Got some black and blue beads. I don't know if you can see those real well, but got them off of Amazon. And then in the same little combo pack, got some silver beads. And then separate pack, I found these clear beads. Um, so I'm going to put those on. And then I'm using a number six, I believe, Indiana blade. Uh, and we want enough beads on here so this blade doesn't uh, get impeded by the head. So we actually want it just above the head. Forgot to mention, I also have two uh, silver metal beads. Those are all plastic. I want these on both sides of the clevis so that it spins freely. I don't want the plastic to, um, I don't know, impede it at all. So the metal ones tend to work a little bit better. Here's the blade. Make sure that when you put the blade on, the curved end, right, is faced away from the bait. There we go. All of our beads are on. The only thing left to do on this guy is to create another one of those barrel twists on the top. I'm going to leave about a bead's worth of space just so there's some play there. I don't want to lock anything down too, too tightly. And then uh, it needs a split ring and it needs a treble hook. But that one will be all said and done. So I'll show you the finished product along with the other one once we tie it up. So speaking of which, let's move over to our eighth ounce. For this guy, we're going to use black 210 denier flat wax this time. We got her loaded up in the vise. You can see this one sits like it should. So again, just be mindful if you do this on your own that you um, angle the head or you, you make that first bend in such a way that it, the uh, final resulting barrel twist loop is going to be in line with the shape of the head. Anyhow, get a lot of thread base down. For this one, we're going to use Arctic Foxtail. The black is on the top, so we're going to start with that. Got a little tuft here. So here's our chartreuse. You can see how much longer this hair is just on its own. I mean, look at that. It's clear off the nose. So that's about even. Trim this one down. All 
All right, we are going to add some flash to this one as, as well. Uh, and again, we're going to play off of the flake that we added to it. So if you recall, it's a chartreuse base with a black top, but we added silver flake to the two-part epoxy. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one, only one strand on each side, um, halved around the, um, around the thread. So effectively, we have four strands on either side. You can taper it a little bit. And same thing, big whip finish by hand all the way around the wire, whoops. And then I'll use my thumb to hold it on the threads. Come on around, come on around. There we go. Last one. Beautiful. Loon, water-based, head cement, lock these threads down. Now this one is going to be all metal beads. So I've got smaller gold and yellow, gold and yellow, gold and silver beads that I will alternate. And then for the blades, we're actually going to do a double clevis blade. I'm going to have to look up what size these are, but they're pretty small. So we're going to, we're going to do a double clevis on the end. And there we have it. Much like the other one, the only thing left to do here is put another barrel twist on the front. We'll leave a little extra space on this one just like the other. And then uh, attach our split ring and our treble hook. So let me finish these guys up. I'll give you some close-up shots. And then it's been raining cats and dogs here for like three days straight. So all the rivers are blown out. I don't know that I can find any open water that's not a mud hole. But I'm going to do my best. If I can't, then I'll still do my best, but we'll do it in the test tank. I guess you guys are going to find out here shortly. with how the little one performed the two clevises so I cut one off and I'm hoping that this guy will perform a little bit better I'll be darn well crap even the single blade not working so I'm gonna switch back to the other one because I know it works it worked well see it Ooh, just barely Thanks, buddy appreciate your play Not huge. 
about a pounder. There we go. All right. Thanks, bud. <laughs> well, you know what? I consider that a success. I mean, we modify a mold, we pour the lead, we, we uh, paint it, two-part epoxy with special glitter, turned out awesome, then we tie it up on the vise, take it fishing, and we catch fish. Two bass today. I didn't get on camera a, a green sunfish as well, so they'll eat it. A little bummed, I gotta be honest, a little bummed at the uh, chartreuse in black. Um, for whatever reason, that blade just would not engage. Uh, even after you guys saw it didn't work with the double, I took off the double and just tried to use it with a single, and still did not work so not really sure what's going on there I think it's a blade size to bait ratio maybe that blade was just a little too small even for a 1 8 with the wire and everything else going on not really sure but uh, the quarter ounce one totally works catches fish as you saw and I think we'll chalk this one up to a win so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you'd like to see more lure building just like that click on this video right here. If you're curious about the name SDG, click on this video right here. Otherwise, until the next time, I'll see you guys.